You are looking into the Brotherton Library, which is the central library of the University of Leeds. This is a large library containing about 500,000 books. Half as many again are housed in separate libraries. The medical library, the dental library, the agricultural library, the cloth workers library, the law library, and the library of the Institute of Education are sectional libraries. Smaller departmental libraries contain extra copies of books for students. All of these make up a total approaching three quarters of a million volumes. A library on the scale of the Brotherton Library is bound to be somewhat complicated and it will help you to find the books you want quickly and easily if you take the trouble to understand how it is arranged. Students enter the library from the Parkinson Court and pass through the turnstile into the large circular reading room. The reading room is on two levels, as you can see, the main floor with a gallery above. Each level has bays around the circle. Those of the main floor are really separate rooms, while those of the gallery are more open. Your notes for students will show the arrangement of the bays. This series of plans shows the relation of the four levels of the library, the gallery and main floor of the reading room, which you have already seen, and the two lower levels, known as the stack, and used for shelving books less in demand. Bays of the gallery have double capital letters. Those of the main floor have single capitals. Bays of the stack are indicated by small letters, double for the mezzanine floor and single for the basement. Your notes for students also gives you, on pages 6 and 7, an alphabetical index of subjects with bay letters and strip numbers showing you where to look for books and periodicals on these subjects on the main floor and gallery of the reading room. A more detailed index, including locations for the stack, is displayed by the main doors into the reading room. For example, if you are looking for chemistry books and periodicals, the index will tell you that these are to be found from strip N15 to strip O26. You will naturally look for these in bays N and O at the main floor of the reading room. If you merely wish to browse among the chemistry books, this is all you need to know. But suppose you have a reading list in your hand provided by your professor. This means that you will want to run to earth particular books of which you already know the author and title. The place to begin is the catalogue in the centre of the circular reading room. This contains entries not only under the authors of books, but also under the names of persons who are the subject of biographies. The term author includes institutions and official bodies. The entry shown here is for a book issued by ABC Television.
In another binder, we see an entry for a biography listed under the name of the person written about, with a cross-reference to the entry by author. This is a book about John Quincy Adams by Samuel Flagg Bemis. Beginning here and moving round the circle, the many thousands of entries are arranged in alphabetical order. The catalogue has grown with the library, and you will find that it extends onto the cases nearby, along the wall on each side of the rear doors, finally turning back again towards the centre of the reading room. At the end of this author catalogue is the periodicals catalogue, and the supplementary catalogue bound in blue, recording recently acquired works. Let's do a trial run, taking one book from this reading list and running it to earth in its subject bay. First, the catalogue entry must be found. Here's the entry for the book we're looking for, Robertson's Preface to Chaucer. You will see that this entry contains certain basic information, the author, Robertson, Douglas William, the title, a preface to Chaucer, the number of pages and plates, the symbol for the size, the place of publication, the publisher, the date of publication. The class mark is in the top left-hand corner. Here is the class mark seen closer. This is the key to the location of any book in the library and consists of three elements. The name of the subject, English, a letter denoting a main topic within a subject, in this case Early Middle English, then one or more figures denoting a specific topic within the main one, in this case Chaucer. Books located in the stack are marked like this. Larger books are marked with a Q and arranged in a separate sequence near the standard size books on the same subject. If the book is in one of the sectional or departmental libraries, the name of that library will appear here in place of the class mark. The whole of this class mark should be jotted down, then the index checked for the location of the main subject. You will see that there are two letters involved. They are quite different and you shouldn't confuse them. One is the bay letter, telling you which bay houses the books on a subject. The other is the letter in the class mark, denoting a division of the main subject. Once the correct bay has been found, it is a question of moving along the shelves to find whereabouts in the classified sequence the required book is located. If there are a number of books with the same class mark, they will be arranged in alphabetical order of author.
If the book you want is not on the shelf, you should ask the staff at the counter. It may already be on loan, in which case they will recall it for you. If you wish to take this book out of the library, you should fill in a borrower's form. Supplies of these will be found at four points around the central catalogue and in receptacles on both sides of the counter. The borrower's form should be filled in carefully and preferably with a ballpoint pen so that the impression goes through to the second leaf of the form. Author, title and volume number if there is one, date of publication, class mark, date of loan, borrower's name. Don't forget to sign and add your address. Now the book and borrower's form should be taken to the exit side of the counter and handed to the library assistant on duty there. The assistant checks the form against the book and stamps the book on a date label inside the back cover with the date the book is due for return. In the case of undergraduates and all other borrowers except research students and staff, books are due for return 28 days after loan. As you leave the library, you must show your book open at the date label to the janitor at the turnstile. Any other books you are carrying must also be shown. If they are library books, which you have borrowed previously, the date label should be shown with an uncancelled date. If they are your own, or borrowed from elsewhere, they should be opened to show that the front inside cover does not carry the library book plate. When you return the book to the library, you should take it to the return side of the counter and hand it to the assistant there. She will give back to you the borrower's form which you filled in when you borrowed the book. So far we have been dealing with ordinary books, which make up the major part of the Brotherton Library's collections. Let us now turn to some other types of material, starting with periodicals. Catalogue entries for these are found in the periodicals catalogue, which is situated at the end of the author catalogue. This is an entry for the Journal of Development Studies. Bound periodicals are shelved in alphabetical order of title just before the books on the same subject. Current unbound parts of periodicals are kept in the current periodicals room which occupies bays P and Q of the reading room. Here, current parts are housed in numbered divisions of the shelves. The titles are shown on the shelf divisions. An alphabetical list of periodicals giving their shelf numbers in the periodicals room is fixed to the wall at the entrance to bay Q.
reference books like these may not be removed from the library. and are marked to this effect inside the front cover. Another category of books in the Brotherton Library will be of great interest to you. These are extra copies of books specifically for undergraduate use, which are housed in Bay H of the Reading Room. They are in constant demand and can only be read in the library. When you have finished with one of these books, it's helpful to replace it in Bay H so that it's immediately available to other students. Not far from the entrance to the Brotherton Library is room 14 in the Parkinson Court. Here, further copies of books in great demand by undergraduates are housed in the short loan collection. Books in this collection may be borrowed for one day only. There's a lot to learn and remember about the Brotherton Library. Your notes for students contains much useful information. Please read them carefully. And if you have any difficulty, please ask the library staff. They are most willing to help.